Hey everyone, today I'm walking you through making this home sweet home chalkboard and I'm going to share all of my best tips and tricks for how to create professional chalkboard art as well as how to do faux calligraphy. We need chalk, of course, we're going to sharpen it with a pencil sharpener. I also really like Q-tips. If you need something to er erase even smaller details, you can wrap a paper towel around anything pointy like a toothpick or a bobby pin. Leave the tail of the paper towel on so it stays on while you're erasing. Paper towels are great for erasing larger chalk marks and water is also useful if things get really dusty. The first thing you need to do is sketch. This is an absolutely imperative part of the creative process. It helps you generate, explore, and combine ideas as well as figure things out like spacing and gives you an overall direction and a goal. I forgot to mention at the beginning you also need a ruler, you guys, because next we're going to be creating guidelines. This can be challenging and a little bit tedious, but it will definitely improve your artwork and make it more professional. I always start by identifying the center point of my workspace splitting it in half vertically and horizontally, and I work out from the center. For this piece, I'm creating three rows that are four inches tall, so my middle row is two inches above and two inches below the horizontal center line. I'm also gonna leave one inch between each row. It's really important to leave space between the lines that you're lettering as well. I know creating guidelines isn't sexy and it's not fun, so normally I edit it out for you guys, but it's actually one of the most important aspects of creating lettering pieces and it will improve your work significantly. When you finish your guidelines, do a light layer of chalk to erase all the smudges and fingerprints. I also marked where each word should begin and end, and I made a note at the top of the chalkboard to show me which letters should fall on each side of the vertical center line. I do the lettering on my chalkboards before I draw anything else because I need the lettering to be large and legible. Legibility is the number one requirement of anything you hand letter ever. Also, the more rules you learn about hand lettering, the more your chalk lettering will improve because it is essentially the same thing. But today I'm gonna to be teaching you how to do faux calligraphy, which is one of the easiest and most effective lettering techniques. So as you can see, I started by writing each word in cursive with a considerable amount of space between the letters because I wanted it to feel light and airy. Follow your guideline as best as you can, making sure to line up the bottoms and tops of the letters properly. I'll link my modern calligraphy video in the description box below if you're looking for an in-depth tutorial on lettering, but what's most important here is to just be as consistent as possible with your width and height of your letters, as well as the spacing between them and the angle at which they're turned. You also typically want to write the same letter the same way, and although all of these rules can vary from style to style, it's generally a good idea to follow it because it makes things very easy on the eye. Creating the faux calligraphy aspect is very easy. All you have to do is thicken up your downstrokes, so any lines where your chalk is moving toward the bottom of the chalkboard. You want to go for consistency here again and try to make them all the same width. Also, make sure to be strategic while you're thickening your downstrokes. For example, if a letter is really small, make sure to draw the thickening line on the outside of the letter so that it doesn't make it even smaller. And if there's a lot of space between two letters, thicken up that outer edge of the line so that it closes up that space some more. When you're all done, you can clean up your mistakes with a Q-tip. Once you're done with your lettering, you can add designs to your chalkboard. Make sure you edit them so that you enhance rather than distract from your overall piece. I'm doing two sprigs of eucalyptus on each side of my lettering. Again, spacing is important here, but normally I just eyeball it for the design aspects. I'm trying to make them start and stop at similar heights and put them at equal distance from the lettering and the edges of the chalkboard. This is my reference photo. It's very important if you do not know how to draw what you are drawing. I'm about a four on the eucalyptus scale, so I'm gonna rely heavily on my reference photo, making sure to stare harder at it than my actual drawing. Yes, you actually want to look at your reference photo more than your actual drawing because you wanna see every little detail on it. Take it all in. And do your best to replicate the different shapes, sizes, and lines that you see.
When you're finished, you can do your final touch-ups, get rid of any fingerprints, make sure your guidelines are completely erased, and finesse your lettering so it looks exactly how you want it. And then you're done. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I post new arts and crafts videos every Tuesday. Make sure to hit the bell if you don't want to miss them, and I will see you then. Here are a couple of videos to watch in the meantime. See you guys later. Bye.